Okay. So let's talk about something I told y'all during my second video ever. Okay. And you know, yeah, right now I wouldn't pass. I don't think, but whatever. If I pass, I pass and move my mic a little bit here. So <clears throat> I am HIV positive. It's gonna be just a so HIV positive? What the fuck? A serious video. I'm not really going to be joking. Of course, I'm going to be vaping because, well, it's better for me. <coughs> so, what is HIV? What What do you mean by HIV? Uh, like, how, 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 what? Are you going to be okay? You know, I love you. Well... HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Basically, my immune system is weaker than the average person. Now, I would actually have to call BS on that for a couple reasons. My immune system actually is really quite strong. Why, Binks? It's just a freaking potato, bud. Stay out of the way, Ragnar. Sit. Good boy. Yep, sit on the cat. Good job. But, HIV is meant to weaken your immune system. There is no real cure. There is a, a test going on right now. Um, someone has, act a couple people, you know, have been cured um, by a miracle or um, by some other way that nobody knows about, right? But there is one over in Swiss Switzerland that is in testing. It is a bone marrow transplant with chemotherapy. So why don't you uh, do that transplant thing? It'd be great. That way you can survive. The only issue is with this is you have to have, there's only 2%, okay? Only 2% in this whole world that has an like a blood type that is immune to a particular strand. Okay, so you have to find someone with that, that immune system to your strand. Now, HIV, why it's so hard to cure? Because it mutates. It changes. Everybody's got a different strand. So, that is why it's not a really a viable cure right now. Did you just touch my headphones? No, man. No, I did not destroy your headphones. Your headphones were like that before, I promise. Don't look at me. You already destroyed them. These are school candy. But, uh... <coughs> Let me talk to y'all a little bit more about how I got it, okay? I didn't have sex to get it. I don't shoot up if I didn't get it through needles. Um, I got it through birth. Okay, my dad was hemophilia, so he, he would bleed easily. He was a free bleeder, and it wouldn't stop. So, it'd take a long time for it to stop, right? So, he had to go get a plasma transfusion back in the 80s, before they really tested everybody's plasma and donated And the company used tainted plasma. It had HIV in it. And uh, they sued. All right. They won because the company went on 60 Minutes and said, oh, it was cheaper for us to use it than to get rid of it. Like, really? Seriously. Wow. So... I was before I was born. I was born in '94, so it was early '80s. And uh, my mom and my dad, of course, they had me. So my mom got it. I got it. I've lived with it my whole life. It's never encumbered me. It's never really actually hurt me. In fact, I've gotten a lot of cool experiences from it. 
2004, what, August. What, what kind of cool story, Mom? I want to say six. Like you get to be on TV or something. It was my first time at this camp for HIV and AIDS. I love this camp. And as soon as I can start donating to them and be able to go back as a counselor, I will. But in this camp on this year, I got to meet Anna Nicole Smith. She was a heck of a person. The last two days, right, we all get together, we say our goodbyes, we make our wish. A lot of people are wishing for more time or they're wishing for a cure or they're, they're wishing for their families to be healthy again. Um, and Anna cried. She cried that whole night. Like, even after we all went to bed, I talked to counselors afterward, and she was still crying when she left the next day. Okay. <clears throat> if I'm right, she donated, I think, two or three million dollars to the camp. Which, that's a lot of money to donate to kids that you never really met. And you, you only met them for a week. And you was crying because you had to leave. That's outrageous. She was a very sweet person. I was, as a kid, I didn't know who she was, right? I had to go home. My mom was mad. Because she had sent us home with one of her shirts that, of her being in a bikini on a motorcycle. And that did not work with parents. But that that's beside the point. She was a good person. And I I wish I would have known who she was because I would have really have enjoyed meeting her. Um, I did get to sit down. I did take a talk to her a little bit. Quit. And uh, try and chew up my purse. But after that, I think it was... 2009, 2010 in August, I got interviewed by Nickelodeon um, for another camper, right? And he had got the very first Halo Awards. Um, his story is just a horrid story. I hate hearing it. It makes me cry every time. Uh, if y'all want to go and find out who, what I'm talking about, just look up Brian Jackson, okay? Uh, he's an amazing dude, and his bro little brother, uh, I was his counselor in training, and this little dude, this little man, I love being around. He was funny, he was energetic, and... It was just nice to be able to say, hey, I'm actually here to help them right now. Not help get my help. Now I can actually take what I learned by being a camper and help these campers, which is amazing. And, you know, this little dude, and I don't want to say his name, but he always made me laugh and well to be honest all of my uh, campers I was counselor over they were all fun as heck now I also got to go to Denver Colorado I spoke about my life my HIV life in front of oh, roughly 2,000 kids and it was like four different schools. And uh, after each time that we did it, we had four kids, all of them telling their story. One of them was Brian's sister. Uh, because she was like, I think she's two years younger than me. His brother's either four, four five, six years younger. But... Uh, <coughs> Uh, 
After every time we spoke, after all the other kids got done, we'd sit at the stage or we sit right as their kids are going to their next scheduled event. They come up, they shake our hands, they'd hug us, and, you know, they they'd be crying. Because one, his sister and because she's affected by HIV. She's not infected, right? Neither is Brian's brother. Um So she would tell her brother's story, but through her eyes and how it's affected her. Now, going to camp, I heard some horrible stories that made me want to cry. I know of kids that fight just so they can go to school. But yet these same people fighting them are afraid of them, afraid of HIV. Because, oh, if we touch you, we'll get HIV. But yet, let's fight you. Logic. Now, <coughs> let, let's go into uh, how do you get HIV or AIDS. Because they, they're, HIV is the starter and AIDS is what finishes the person off. It's what kills. It's what my dad died of was AIDS. Hi, Binks. I'm not petting on you all day. Go away. Go away. So... There's only four ways to get HIV or AIDS, okay, from someone that's affected. First one is blood, okay, vaginal fluid and semen, not sperm. There's no HIV in sperm. And then the last one actually is breast milk, which is weird but true. So, like, whenever I went to jail, right, I went on my second, uh, like, I got transported to another jail. Whenever I got there, they go, do you have any medical problems? I'm like, yeah, I'm HIV positive. And one of the guards that we called Reg, she goes, oh, my God, does that mean I'm infected? I looked at her. I'm like, okay, first off, there's four ways to get HIV and AIDS. Blood, I'm not bleeding, so you ain't got to worry about it. Vaginal and semen fluid, I'm not fucking your fat ass. And breast milk, and I'm not gonna suck on your titties. So you're safe. She dropped it. Her sergeant looked at me and goes, yeah, some people are just ignorant. I'm like, dang. But, and those are the only four ways you can get HIV, guys. Or AIDS. Blood, vaginal, fluid, semen. So if you have sex, right? And breast milk. Again, I guess that could be a sexual thing, too. Yeah. I guess so. But, my wife does not have HIV. My kids do not. Which is amazing. Like, that, that is a weight on my shoulders that is gone. I don't have to worry about it. My kid got lucky. My wife, she got lucky. She accepted the fact that she would get HIV from me. Whenever we tried for my kid, right? For our kid. <coughs> and I think that might have been the reason why I grew so attached, to be honest. But, what are you doing? Why are you... Why are... You know you're not my cat, right? Can y'all hear it? I know you're right by him Pern. What? Your eyes are so creepy. So fucking creepy. Come here. Look at his eyes. See it? See the blue? What? Anyway, so I wanted to make this video, let y'all know that if you are trans, if you are gay, bi, whatever you all go by, non-binary, it don't matter how imperfect your immune system is, how imperfect you look, just remember to be your beautiful self.
okay? Because you might not be able to pass one day, right? Big deal. I went yesterday to work with no makeup, nothing. Just my hat on for work so, you know, my hair don't fall on the food. And I still got called ma'am. I still got called Zoe. I still got called she, her, all the correct pronouns without makeup. So, it just goes to show you will still pass whether you think you don't pass or not. And trust me, girl, my shirt is not flattering. Okay? My shirt don't show shit. It kind of look like that. Like flat, you know. With maybe a little indentation. Um, by the way, this was the shirt I used whenever I was homeless. So it's stained all to hell. But, um, God, I thought I put my hair up better. But for now, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to leave you off on a bait. Just remember, everybody is different. Everybody sees things differently. So, just because you don't think you pass, don't mean other people won't. Okay? Other people might 100% see you as a as the gender you are okay so just remember that you are beautiful as you are no matter what people tell you for now i love you guys